as far as I'm concerned, comes into, um, into view here. Um, you may have heard about African swine fever as being um, present in wild boar populations in Eastern Europe and gradually moving towards Western Europe. How important is it to know about this and what does it mean for the, um, the swine industry at the moment in Western Europe, but who knows where else? Um, we have invited Dr. Willy Lufen to be with us. He is attached to Wageningen Bioveterinary Research and he is head of the National Reference Lab uh, with regard to African swine fever and classical swine fever. So I can say he is the expert here to, to speak about African swine fever. And I'm pleased to have you here and that you can explain a little bit about what the virus entails and yeah, how it can impact on swine production worldwide. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Vincent. Uh, yes, African swine fever, is it coming? That's the main question, of course. And this presentation, I will give you a little bit of insight in what is African swine fever? <clears throat> where is it at the moment? Uh, what can we do about it? And what can we expect for the future? Sorry. Okay, so what is classical, or what is African swine fever? African swine fever, as most of you know, is a highly lethal disease for pigs. It has a very short incubation period, between three and 10 days after pigs get infected, they can develop clinical symptoms. And these clinical symptoms usually start with general symptoms like fever, loss of appetite, and pigs becoming lethargic. African swine fever is a hemorrhagic disease, which means that you can also ultimately see clinical symptoms that are related to this. Pigs with uh, skin bleedings, pigs with blue ears, blue tails, blue extremities, and in worst case, even uh, a hemorrhagic uh, diarrhea. African swine fever has a very high mortality, especially if the disease is introduced in a population for the first time. And that all makes it one of the most threatening pig diseases at the moment for the whole pig industry and also for wild boar. So this brings us to the first poll question, Vincent. Thank you. Um, it's about the geographic spread of the virus. Where do you think that African swine fever has occurred, both historically and currently? Is that A, in only Africa? B, in Africa and Europe, and C, Africa, Europe, Asia, and South America, or D, the whole world, all continents, while well, excluding Antarctica, that is. I will start the poll now, and let's see what our viewers think of this. Um, ah, the first counts are coming in, and, um, oh, I'm surprised to see that, that uh, only Africa, there's not much. So many people know that the disease has crossed the Mediterranean at least and um, yeah answer B is getting the most answers at the moment almost half of them I will display the, the results here there we go so yeah it's about 46% um, of the people think that it's Africa and Europe well tell us okay well thank you Vincent but that's actually not the right answer <laughs> because the correct answer is actually C Africa Europe Asia and South America Historically, we all know uh, the disease from Africa, of course, where it was first reported in the 1920s, and uh, it was an African disease for a very long time. But in 1957, it was introduced for the first time in Europe, in Spain and Portugal, where it was endemic for more than 35 years. Um, in the meantime, however, we also had outbreaks in countries like Cuba, domestic, the Dominican Republic, in Haiti, and also in Brazil, mainly in the 70s. So that means that already historically the disease occurred in uh, South, Africa, South America as well. And currently the disease is present, of course, still in Africa. This is uh, an overview of the reported outbreaks from uh, uh, the FAO. Africa, so uh, that's still the, 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 main the main continent where the disease occurs. However, since 2007, we have this large outbreak that occurs in, uh, that started in the Caucasus and that uh, spread further both into Europe and also into Asia, although this is mainly the Russian part uh, in Asia. So you can see that there have been outbreaks as far as just north of Mongolia in the Asian part of Russia. So that immediately brings us to the second poll. Yes, this is about animals. Which animal species are involved in African swine fever? Um, I'll start the poll here. 
the answers is only domestic pigs, wild boar and hard ticks. Uh, is that warthogs, domestic pigs, wild boar, soft ticks and bush pigs? Is that domestic pigs, wild boar, warthogs, some rodents? And the last one is all suids, some rodents, soft ticks and a stable fly. Um, <clears throat> let's see what the, the, the viewers think of this. And it looks like answer D, all suids, some rodents, soft ticks and stable fly is uh, getting the most clicks. No, now C is taking over. And um, yeah, I'll stop the, the poll here. And that's, uh, yeah, answer C is just one with 43%. And then a lot of people think it's D as well. Okay, that's, that's also a bit unfortunate because the correct answer is actually B. Warthogs, domestic pigs, wild boar, soft ticks and bush pigs. Warthogs and soft ticks are mainly involved in the disease in Africa where there's a so-called sylvetic cycle, a cycle in the wild. And both the warthog and the soft tick have to be involved to maintain this cycle of the virus. So bush pigs are also can be involved. They are occasionally infected in Africa. Uh, we're not really sure what role they play in the whole cycle and how they maintain the disease in Africa, but sometimes they get infected. Then we have both domestic pigs and wild boar. They are actually the same species. And uh, domestic pigs, they get infected both in Africa, Europe, and uh, also in Asia and in South, South America, they were involved. Wild boar are typically for Eurasian continent, so that's where they get infected. And beside the soft tick that occurs in Africa, in, also in the southern part of Europe, another species of this soft tick got involved in the 1950s until the 1990s. There are no other animals that we know of that can be infected. So no rodents, no stable flies, although we know that the stable fly can passively carry the virus for a very short time, but it cannot get infected, so it cannot replicate the virus. So that brings us to the question, how does African swine fever spread? And there we have a completely different picture in Africa and in Europe. On the left, you see again the sylvetic cycle where the warthog and the soft tick are involved. And why is this very specifically uh, occurring in this cycle? Both the wild, uh, both the warthog and the soft ticks, they live in holes in the ground, the burrows where these warthog are living and sleeping. Soft ticks do not get outside a lot, so that me makes uh, so that means that in these burrows they actually get together very closely, and they have been. Uh, establishing, establishing this cycle in the wild for probably already millennia where the virus has adapted to be present without really making the warthogs or the soft tick diseased. In Europe we have on the right you can see the wild boar and the domestic pigs and there are several routes of infection for these pigs which you can see sometimes they overlap sometimes they are different there are soft ticks that can be involved, although there's no indication that at the moment in Europe soft ticks are actually involved. Other pigs or other wild boar getting in contact with each other, that's a way to get the virus from one animal to the other. There's materials where you can imagine that in wild boar this is different than in domestic pigs. Domestic pigs we are talking mainly about transport trucks or materials that are being used in farms. In wild boar, you can think of materials that are, for instance, being used by hunters. For wild boar, typically, it's also the carcasses that are left in the field. If the wild boar gets infected and it dies, the carcass or the cadaver will stay in the field and it can actually remain infectious for a very long time. So if in the end some other wild boar gets in contact with this carcass, it can sometimes be weeks or months after the fact, they can still get infected. Most importantly, however, in both cases is the feed. And we're not talking about commercially produced feed, of course, we are talking here about products from uh, pigs, so sausages or uh, other dried meat products, for instance, that are not being heated, that people are consuming, but of which remains will enter the feed system of the pig. Uh, kitchen waste, for instance, but in case of wild boar, it can simply be a sausage that is thrown away in the field and a wild boar get access to it. It's theorized at the moment, for instance, that the outbreaks in wild boar in the Czech Republic and in Hungary have been caused by such a sausage or other big product that has been thrown away in the field and that the wild boar had access to. 
So if you talk about African swine fever, you can actually uh, differentiate between different populations that get involved. There is of course the wildlife, which is in Africa is very typically this warthog soft tick cyclist with the bush pigs getting involved. In Europe, it is mainly the wild boar. So no ticks there, no warthogs, but uh, simply our own wild boar. Then you have the domestic pigs, and in domestic pigs you can differentiate between backyard holdings and commercial herds, because the epidemiology of African swine fever in both types of herds, herds is quite different. So why is African swine fever so dangerous? There are many reasons for it to be so dangerous. First of course, first of all, there's the animal welfare. It's a terrible disease for pigs and they get to suffer a lot if they get infected. There's a psychosocial impact on pig farmers. If you have a large herd that you have developed over the years into a nice breeding herd, and all of a sudden you are being culled because of African swine fever, that has a huge impact. But also the impact of the constant threat of the disease, even if you do not get infected, can have some psychosocial impact on pig farmers. Then there's access to animal proteins, food security. Especially in poor countries, pigs play a large role in food security, a way for people to get some animal proteins. So that is also at stake here. And finally, there's the economical consequences. Especially again in poor countries, it's an important income or savings for smallholders. There are direct damages to affected commercial farms. There are damages to the related industry, the feed to fork, procedure and if you are an exporting country the export damages can be huge. So what are risk factors and I'm going to focus here only on the on the uh, farmers, the backyard farms and the commercial farms. There are many factors known especially in backyard farming that can cause the disease to happen in your farm. Feeding of kitchen waste it's basically on the top. That's one of the main ways for the virus to spread between backyard farms. Not only because those farms are feeding the kitchen waste, but also because in these kind of farms, the virus has a high chance to enter the food chain and to get big products on the market that contain the virus. Then there's free ranging of pigs. In these backyard farms, there's often that they can free range scavengers they go out and find their own food. There's the possible contact with wild boar. There's direct contact between pigs from different farms, for instance, by moving a boar around. And basically this all relates to the low biosecurity in this type of farms. So that's an important way how this virus can spread between these farms. On the other hand, we have the commercial farms. And we see in practice that commercial farms often get less often infected with African swine fever. If it gets into the farm, this is often related to gaps in the biosecurity. Although we often do not know the exact route of introduction, it has to be some way that it enters through some hole in the biosecurity and gets on the farm where it infects the pig. So what can we do? And in backyard farms, you can say, well, we can deal with all these known risk factors. And while that is true, the big problem there is that it interferes with the fundamentals of backyard farming. If you cannot feed your pig your kitchen waste, if you cannot have them uh, scavenging around to get additional food, if you cannot move the boar around and each farmer has to have its own boar, it doesn't become economically feasible for a backyard holding to exist. So we definitely need to do more research into what kind of social factors are involved here and how can we interfere in such a way that these farms can exist and still do not play a role in the spread of African swine fever. But commercial farms, it's actually much easier. Uh, there we can, uh, of course, maintain a high biosecurity. Most farms are really into uh, having a high biosecurity already. Of course, the first rule is not to feed kitchen waste. It's actually forbidden in Europe to do so. And there's also not much reason to feed kitchen waste in large commercial farms. So that is uh, not a very common practice already. But beware that also if you have visitors or if you have personnel and they bring their own lunches, beware that this does not end up with your pigs. So 
keep the food and the food products out of the of the pig stables. So and that brings us to our final poll, Vincent. Thank you very much. We'll start the poll in. Um, this is about the future of African swine fever in Europe. Some of you may have read the recent interview we published, but if you haven't, give us your opinion. What do you think? What will happen with African swine fever in Europe in the near future? Will it spread all over Europe, both on wild boar and in on -and farms? Will it remain in the current area with occasional breakouts, outbreaks every, elsewhere? Will it be eradicated, but it may take several decades, or will it be eradicated between five and 10 years? Let's have a look at the, the results that are coming in. And the first and the second answer, A and B, they are um, in the lead and both getting about as many um, as many votes here. I think B is the winner. With uh, It will remain in the current area with occasional outbreaks elsewhere. What is your opinion on that? Okay, thank you, Vincent. Well, of course, this was a question with no correct answer. Maybe in 40 years we will know. So what do we know? We know that it's endemic in wild boar at the moment. And we also know that there's no efficacious eradication strategy available in these wild boar. So that means the affected areas have been increasing, especially in the Baltic states and in Poland, where there are a lot of wild boar. And it's, well, up to until now, it seems almost impossible to control the virus in such a situation. It's also a disease that's very hard to combat in backyard holdings, especially when the virus enters the food chain. Uh, food, food products, they can remain infectious for several weeks or even months, especially if the food is also frozen. But if it's about dried meat, you can expect that even weeks or months after the original outbreak, the virus could somewhere enter a new pig and it could all start all over again. We have seen localized outbreaks in the Czech Republic and Hungary. They may definitely occur more often, especially when the virus gets uh, spreads very much in Eastern Europe in backyards and uh, wild boar. And we've seen in these uh, single outbreaks that an immediate action is at least what is required. So far, the Czech Republic seems to have the virus relatively well under control. We still have to wait and see what actually happens there. And now it's up to Hungary to show that also there they can take the necessary measures to keep the virus contained to a very small area and eradicate it from there. We also have to realize that there's no vaccine available for them and no vaccine will be available in the foreseeable future. In the past, for classical swine fever in wild boar, we had the option to vaccinate wild boar through baits that were being fed to the wild boar that contained the, virus, the, the vaccine. But for African swine fever, this is definitely not an option for the moment. So the answer to the question that I asked in the opening slide, is it coming? Well, I think at least it was here to stay and probably it will get worse and slowly but surely it will spread and we have to be prepared for it and have to take our measures to keep it at least from our own farms. Thank you very much. Vincent. Thank you, Willy. Excellent presentation and also a very interesting one. Um, when the virus entered Russia, people thought, ah, it won't get to us. When it entered Poland, people felt, ah, oh, it won't get close to us. But now Czech Republic, mm -hmm. Hungary has been affected. Do you feel there is a, a degree of underestimation going on in Europe? There has always been, I think, from the start, a degree of underestimation. When it started in 2007 in Georgia, uh, people thought, well, this is still very far away and uh, it will be a local problem, but it will be solved in the end. Well, 10 years after, we have seen that that is not the case. Um, I think that now everybody realizes that this is a real threat, not just for the region that is already infected or that is very near the region that is already infected, but probably for the whole of Western Europe, if only that uh, these incidental outbreaks like in the Czech Republic and Hungary could also occur in other countries. And when we speak of other countries, um we're now talking about the virus moving west, but mm -hmm. the virus might as well move east. Will you, will you expect that Asia has to be aware of possible outbreaks? Do, do they have to, mm -hmm. to take uh, measures as well? Yes, I think definitely. We've seen in the graph from the FAO where outbreaks have occurred in the last two years that there have been outbreaks in uh, the Asian part of Russia. Luckily so far, the outbreaks that occurred there have been 
very quickly under control but when you go very much east you end up in china sometime and in china we know that the largest pig population in the world is located there so there's definitely a need to also be very much aware in the uh, asian countries that the virus may be coming closer and that there's also a danger for the virus to enter their countries so also an emphasis to uh, to increase their yep. their awareness again for biosecurity definitely and you see nowadays there's a lot of uh, some people would like the reintroduction of swill feeding also mm -hmm. in in um, in the context of trying to not waste so much uh, feed or food leftovers um, what is your opinion on that in the context of african swine fever yeah, I, I can understand the, the, the whole discussion about that, <clears throat> because of course there is more than just uh, the combat of the disease. There are also other reasons why we would like to have swill feeding uh, coming back. Uh, if we do it, I think we really have to be pre well prepared to make sure that the swill is not a risk for spreading of diseases. So that means that if we do it, we better make sure that it's a safe way to do it. Excellent. Well, thank you very much again for your presentation. Um, <clears throat> I would like to close off with a couple of comments, so don't don't move away now because uh, it's all about the follow-up. In case you would like to review this webinar once more, it is possible. You can access it through our website www.pigprogress.net. It will be uh, available for a very long time. As well, in case you have any questions or you asked any questions and they weren't answered during this webinar, our speakers will uh, review them and will supply the answer at a later moment. Um, last but not least, after this webinar, when you have logged out, there will be a short, small survey with a couple of questions which helps us to improve the webinar so next time we can even do a better job than we did today. I hope all this has been informative and that you have been learning and picking up things and we would love to see you again at the next webinar. Thank you very much.